Three, two, one. Welcome back. Why do I have an echo? All right. Do we have an echo? Do you have an echo? No, I just hear you. All right, well, I got an echo for some reason. I have no idea why. All right. All right, hopefully that sounds okay. Yeah, there, there the echo's off now. All right, good. I tell you, man, you just never, never, ever, ever know uh, on these things. And so here we go. Bureau, this is the 12U game here between Bureau and Coco. Daryl, this is a game that was won earlier this year by Bureau. And uh, listen, I will let everybody know that if we get a slow stream, uh, signal again, which we did. We got a great upload speed to start. We will immediately jump to a Facebook live. So I just want to let you know at the top of the screen is our sponsor for the day, and that's Gamers R Us, as Coco's uh, 12U yes, team is set right? to kick off, and Bureau yeah, Beach will receive. But Bureau Beach won this football game. Coco did not play well in their first meeting together. No, they, no, they didn't, and uh, they, they're looking for redemption in this game. So we will see here that that game actually happened at Coco and Vero came up and took it to the Tigers as uh, Coach Williams and for uh, Vero Beach coach uh, Calvin moment. Uh, they, they, they really believe they're they are one of the best teams in the country. This 12 u Vero Beach team. So we will see. Robert Mitchell. So we are ready to go. Here we go. As the Tigers set to kick it off. Tigers get set to you hear Hadley in the background, and this is not a good kick, and it's gonna roll out of bounds, and that is illegal procedure on the kickoff. And that'll be first and ten for Vero Beach. What's that at the 40? No, 35. 35. So it's not a bad kick. It went out of bounds at the 29. So they're gonna give them. Um, well, they can re-kick if they really wanted to, if they, they wanted to make them do that, or they can take it at 35. I, I think I'd just take this ball at the 35. Yes, All right, there we go. Everything's good. Everything looks lined up. Everything looks absolutely beautiful on the screen. So we are good to go. This is Alan Sklodarzynski and Daryl Durant. Seth Gibson will join us and tell us about gamers are us coming up late in the second quarter here as Vero uh, if you don't know are in the red on the left they're going to be moving left to right and Coco is in these uh, baby blue uniforms with the black helmets and uh, so yeah I don't know uh, I have no idea balls out Ooh, got well, lucky I've, on that. Popped right back up to him. Darrell, I'm going to tell you something right now. His legs got ahead of him so fast that time. He was running top heavy because of speed. Yep. Yeah, like you said, some people might get on, on here and confuse Coco for Rockledge and the, the Baby Blues today, but it is Vero and Coco. Yeah. As... Vero in the 12U game, not a, and this, this, this is the young man I was telling, that's a hold, uh, that's a big time hold, that's a, and I'll tell you what, uh, that's a heck of a play right there by Jaheim Scott, it's a hold, flag is a hold, I, you know what, I decline this, I'm right there with you, third and ten, Oh, they're going to take him back. All right, so Coco's going to accept the penalty and force him back. And that's going to be a holding call against the Indians. So it's going to be second and 20 instead of third and 12. 
So I, I don't know about that one. I probably would have declined that. Yes, yes, I'm right there with you. There would be third and ten. But Coco could be playing field, uh, field position too. Yeah, no, I mean, that, that's, that, that's a great point. Looks like the defense has come fired up and ready to go. So we shall see here. We shall see, and this is number zero, and he's gone down. Oh, nope, nice pursuit. That I thought he was going to cut yeah. that corner, yeah. but I'm going to tell you what, Marquez Young cut off Lederick Wellmaker. Wellmaker looked like he had an opportunity to go to the house, and out of nowhere came Marquez Young. Coco closed it up, now a third and seven. I was bit really spit out of my mouth. He's gone. I'm sure you heard me. Third down, and this is a handoff to the other side. A sweep. Oh, blind. Oh, that's a backside block. But yeah, I, that that you got to throw that flag. That's a blindside block. That's going to be a 15-yard penalty. But he stepped out of bounds, short of the first down. Did they throw it? Yeah, they threw it. Okay. They absolutely threw it. It came from the other direction because the official on the sideline was busy marking the, he stepped out of bounds, but this is gonna be 15. And you definitely take this. Yes. Yeah, 15 is. They're short of the first down, so it'll be fourth and two, but. Look, it's a hell of a block five years ago. Yeah. But it's not allowed now, so. He definitely threw the shoulder. I hope they aren't thinking about picking this flag up because that was clearly, clearly. And this is what we talked about earlier. You got to call and go with it. Yeah, personal foul. Yeah, that, 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 there's the blindside block call. And that's the only call we're going to get. So that's going to back them up 15, and it's going to be third down and uh, 22 now. Did you get to put this on what they're playing for? Yeah, I can do that. This is what they're playing for. Now well, I can't really see it. There it is. There you go. That's what they're playing for. That's beautiful, isn't it? Looks good. Look at that focus thing. You just taught me something, man. You put all kinds of things in front of that camera now. Third and 14, 15, actually. And this is another sweep to the other side. Oh, nice, what a play. Nice job. How about that? And for the Coco Tigers, that is Trenton Hamilton in there on the stop. Hamilton gets in there and blows it up. And now Vero Beach, who scored on their opening possession the last time these teams got together, they have a decision to make, Daryl. Oh, they better punt the ball. Yeah. It is, it is fourth and a couple... This is fourth and a trip. Yes. Trip up to Bavard County. Yeah. And yeah, they definitely are going to punt. No, they're not back that deep. No. I was looking at the ref. Yeah. That's a great kick. Good kick. Good kick. And a great punt by the Indians. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know why Coco was up so tight. Yeah, I mean, they were only 20 yards, 25 yards from the line of scrimmage. And it, bear, and it burns them, but the Tigers will take over first and 10 at their own 31-yard line here. And that's just an outstanding job by that young man to just get the – I mean, he, he didn't have to directional punt that. He just needed to kick it over their heads, yep. and he did. 7.58 to play here. We're going to see the Tigers take the field for the first time offensively here. Bureau Beach undefeated this season. Yep. And boy, do they have the size, too. They're a good unit. Coco is going to have to block. I want to say this is a one and two seed. M16, they call him. 
is your quarterback for the Coco Tigers. That is Micah Knight. Knight. And that's just great coverage. That's a loss of seven right out of the gate. Second and, well, six, five, second and 15. As number zero for the good, good pass, pass completed. If they would, that one receiver would have just got his block out there, he could have turned the corner. As a Derek Wellmaker, and you're going to hear with Derek Wellmaker's name a lot today. Uh, you, yes, you are. He is one of those special kinds of athletes. Second and 15 for Knight and the Tigers offense. Knight turns, gives. That's a Scott outside. Tippy goes in, stays in. He's going to get the five yards back and make it third down and eight for Coco. So it's manageable from here. Yep. Call it seven. It's a nice run. Nah, man, come on. Are we buffering? Tigers break the huddle. Or is it just my iPad buffering? Third down. Snap. Gibbs. That's going to be number one, Scott, and he's That's tripped Scott. Up at the line of scrimmage. Still manages to get two, three yards on the play. He, he thought he was going to get in the game. <laughs> Look at the little man right there. Man was to get uh, looks game. like I got it back. We okay? Yeah, you're good. Okay. So now it's going to be fourth and six. It's going to bring up fourth down here for the Tigers. The ball sitting right at the 35 yard line. And they're going to the punt. Tigers are on with the punt team. And now Bureau's got this covered well because they got a guy all the way back. Oh, they're going to uh, fake it. They're fake the punt. Can he get there? He's got there. First down and more. Down oh, and he's still on. He's got it. He's at the 20. Tackled at the 15. And that should, that should be a horse collar, but it's not. And that is a heck of a play by a Norris Reed on the fake punt. Yeah, they should they should be at the five yard line, and I mean they missed that one. But great call by Coco. Great call. What a great fake punt. I thought he stepped out of bounds, but he, he stayed in. Apparently Vero thought he stepped out too. A Norris Reed. <laughs> That's a heck of a play. And Coco's going to take a timeout on the field with 5.18 to play in the first quarter. And that is just, I tell you what, you want to win a championship, those are the kinds of calls sometimes you got to make, Daryl. We see them at every level. Yeah. And, I, you know, you think about Sean Payton's onside kick in the Super Bowl and the Philly special and – all the things that you see that win championships, that's a play that wins championships. Yes, sir. And, man, if you could have got everybody up to the line like you wanted to for Coco and not have to burn a timeout there, that would have been even better. Yeah, I think they were really excited about the fact that they converted that. Yeah, in, in a big way. I mean, you are what, at the 40 and now you're at the 15? So, yeah. I mean, he – Inside the gamers are us red zone and the Tigers back out on the field here. Wishbone formation. Yeah. Micah Knight pitches it out. Ooh. And they, I'll tell you what, they hitting out there. They are popping. That's number 33 uh, making the big hit there. That is uh, Khalil Tomlin. Young on the carry for Coco. Thomas on the hit. My goodness, these young men, 449 and running first quarter. Coco looking to get in. Oh, no, he dropped the ball, and Vero Beach has it. Rolled right into the arms of the nose tackle, and that is number 23 that comes up with it, and that is Jacob, uh, Jacoby Patterson. 
and Vero Beach ends that threat in the blink of an eye on a muff snap by Micah Knight, and it's first and 10 for the Indians at their own 14-yard line. Yeah, about where they started last uh, possession, um, down here deep in their own end zone. Yeah, you cannot have mistakes like that in a game like this. And obviously I'm not preaching anything to anyone that you don't know. There are only two trophies left on that table over there. One for 12U, one for 14U. This, the 12U division. Five wide receivers set, Daryl. No running backs in the backfield. Derek Wellmaker, I believe, is the quarterback. Wellmaker, oh, quarterback draw. Actually, check that. That's number two, the quarterback. That's Caleb Phillips. Phillips. That's yeah. a good play. Yeah, the middle linebacker has to spy him when uh, they're, they're five wide out. That middle linebacker has him one-on-one -on -one, along with the five defenders on the line. I've seen Caleb Phillips play seven-on-seven. Seven. Yeah, he's pretty good. So no safety for Coco. Throws it out here. Oh, he caught that. That's a great job. I tell you what, that's Cravion Love and that's not a great throw by Phillips. Love came back and made the catch, Daryl, and Co made the play. Yeah, if Coco would have turned around a little sooner, they could have picked that one off. That could have been six. Yes. First and 10, and Vero Beach is already at the 35 yard, their own 35. Just two plays it's taken them to get out here. And Phillips didn't no. like the snap, kept it himself. He's still on his feet. 15 more yards for Phillips and into Coco territory at the Tiger 48. Phillips just never hesitated. He did not like the snap, you could tell. Didn't like the ball placement and just took off with it. That's a headsy play by that young man. Five more wide receivers set. Vero Beach not afraid to put them all up on the line here when you got a young man like Phillips at quarterback. Uh, hey, yep, they're going to keep giving it to him. He's going to keep taking it. Uh, that's 18, 17 more. All oh, balls out. And that is Wellmaker with it. But Derek Wellmaker comes up with the ball. It's, it's one of them plays, if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, I mean, if Coco's going to, you know, allow the middle of the field to look like the Red Sea, then you got to walk through it, you know? Coco needs to keep a linebacker. they got to spy him. I mean, it's just that simple. It, 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 it's a five-man up front versus a five-man on each side of the ball, and you got a linebacker one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Here we go, first and ten. What are they doing here? Where is the quarterback? I don't see number two. From the 39-yard line. They may need to take a timeout here. Oh, they what they're doing? And that's just a little give there. And that time, the quarterback was... That was Makai White, the quarterback that time. Phillips is not in at quarterback at the moment. So this is Makai White at quarterback now for Vero Beach. And he turns and get, or yeah. And that is Mono Imano. That is Jaden Molina. And Jaheem Scott greets him. And that'll be third down. And Coco's defense is tightening up now up the middle. That is no longer there what was there to start this drive for Phillips up the gut. This is four down territory for Vero Beach. So they've got two downs to pick up seven yards, third and seven. Uh, where is, oh, I see Phillips on the sidelines. Okay, he was getting tended to with some equipment. All right. Oh, nice little sweep. And I'll tell you what, that's a great tackle by number nine for Coco. That is Trenton Hamilton again. And he tried to stiff arm him, and Phillips is back in the game, and no gain, fourth and seven. 1.15 to play in the first quarter, and uh, 
man, what an opening, uh, what an opening quarter. It didn't take long to play. One minute on the dot. Phillips is not playing quarterback. That, I, I, I don't understand that play call. No, that, that was in the triple coverage too. Yeah, I, that's just not a good throw, not a good play call. And that'll bring up first and 10 for the Coco Tigers. And they'll take over at the Vero Beach 35 yards or 36 yard line. Coach Hadley shouting out the cheerleaders. Their Super Bowl's coming up December the 7th. Yeah. Try to get it worked out here where Daryl can bring that to you here on BSN. First and 10 at the 36-yard line of Coco as the Tigers. It, listen, the referee has blown the play clock started, so it's going. So Coco now takes the field. M16, your quarterback. They got a hustle. Micah Knight, yeah, they got, they got a hurry here. Under 10, under four seconds, three, two, and there it is. Yeah, I don't understand it. And that's uh, going to be first and 15. Go ahead, Daryl. And I don't think Coco knew he blew the whistle for it to play because the coach is not in a great mood because he, he he thought he had the 30 seconds still. No, he, he, he wasn't. They weren't close to it. First and 15 now. Knight turns, good. hands, big hole, big good cut, hole. and this could be a touchdown. He's at the 50, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Coco Tigers. That is Marquez Young. The baby blue Coco Tigers. The baby blue Coco Tigers. Marquez <laughs> Young with a straight dive up the middle. Speed prevails, 6 nothing. Wow, that's one way to beat a first and 15. That was a good hole by them hogs up front. Yes, it was. And they're going to come on and kick the extra point here. Snap is high. They had a no shot. No shot. No shot. Well, here's what I'm going to do. It's 35.7 seconds to play in the first quarter instead of gone back and I'm going to change the quarter graphic now too okay so, so nobody freak out nobody freak out all right so I'm going to change the quarter graphic okay so that's that done and then now there we go all right here we go six nothing Coco on top and the Tigers strike first at 35.7 seconds to go in the first quarter. And my goodness, Daryl, I was not expecting that to be the result of a first and 15 play. Nope. You would imagine that a team like Vero would have that better covered. But the speed just prevailed and killed on that one. That Coco, Coco got them a crease. And he just went to town. He went all the way to the grocery store. Yes, he did. And the ball is thrown in and set to kick off here. For Coco will be my dude, Jack Rabbit, Jackson Franco, out there to kick off. I didn't realize Jack Rabbit was a kicker, too. <laughs> Nice little boot. Yeah, <laughs> look at Jackson boot. Oh, picked up by the Derek Wellmaker. Wellmaker and Wellmaker out across the 25 to the 27 yard line. First and 10 for Vero Beach. And their last series, Daryl, was interrupted. Uh, Phillips had a couple of nice plays up the middle, but he had to come off for an equipment issue. He did. And he and when he came back in, he he didn't come back in at quarterback. 
and then they had that pass on fourth down. So we'll see what they do here. And if Phillips is the quarterback, it looks like he is. 30 seconds to play in quarter number one. And the Indians break the huddle here. Boy, it's just an absolutely beautiful night. Oh, ball on the Ball's ground. Out. Oh, my. Who's got it? That's Coco football. Coco Tigers have this ball, I believe. No. Nope. Oh, how did they lose it in the pile? That's got to be a great job by Phillips to get that ball back because it was not in his hands when he hit the ground. No, it was not. That's a loss of 10 yards, second and 20. And right now, it is Vero Beach making the mistakes. We saw Coco make in this first contest. That's the end of the first quarter. The good news is I don't have to change the quarter. <laughs> yeah. Great game. Great game going right now. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to step aside. We'll be right back right here on the Bar Sports Network. All right, welcome back here to Brevard Sports Network. And following a, I don't know, I guess a bad snap. I tell you what, it may come out big that Phillips came up with that football, but Vero Beach is now second and 18 officially. And a wildcat and play. And a wildcat formation, and Coco eats it alive. And in there, um, helping to make the tackle that time was 34, Gabriel Young. Also in there on the play, number nine. Like it's the third time tonight we've called his name, Trenton Hamilton. 9.39 to play in the first half, and the Tigers are on top, six to nothing. Nephew Mark says, let's go, Coco. And this is Wellmaker to the outside, and he, he will get back. Five plus two, and it'll be third down and eight. So a big third down coming up here. Fourth, okay. Fourth down and eight. So Vero Beach with here. a big decision to make and here. I know you're down six, but oh, they're going to take a timeout. Yeah, we got an injured player down on the field too. So Vero will be able to save their timeout. But, no, what do you do here, Double D? What, what do you do? I know you're down six. You're, now, if you're or up at about the 40, I would say go for it. You're at the 28. I would punt if I was a head coach or offensive coordinator just to give Coco down here. You got a punter. We've already seen that. You've kicked it over Coco's head because they were playing a little bit too shallow. So, I mean, he can kick the ball 40 yards. I would – take my chances of kicking this and pinning Coco deep and let my defense play, but. Or, and I like that. That's what I would do too, by yeah. the way. Or maybe they do what Coco did in the same exact spot, fake the punt. It, they were actually about to say, yeah. and that's a good, oh, and Coco's not set. And they're going for this. Oh, oh they drew him off. Great job by Vero Beach to draw three of the guys offsides it was fourth and seven now going to be fourth and two and it really isn't a decision here because phillips has been splitting the uh middle of the defense here and he can just keep this and pick it up himself coco's got to buckle down here them tigers might be fired up now wanting to get them yards back with the ball being in the 
This is Wildcat to number 23. He's got the first oh, down. Man. He's gone. And this is going to be a tie ball game if he can outrun the Coco secondary. He's at the 10, 5, touchdown. Vero Beach, number 23, Jacoby Patterson. And Jacoby Patterson duplicates what Coco just did on the previous drive. That 70 yards. And we're tied at six, Daryl. Yes, it is. That was a good run, good block, good executed play. He had great blocking ahead of him, too. You're right. Good call. I already called it, Coach Hadley. Yep, Coach, you're a little late <laughs> on that. 8.57 to go, and in the blink of an eye, that, you know, look, that's fourth down, Daryl. It that, was. That is huge. And here we got a false start. Fourth down. And you pull that off. Now, if it was, I mean, they were going for it. For, it was probably the same play with fourth and eight. Yeah, I would think so. That's the short side of the field, too. That is not easy to execute. Good job. That is a good job. Coco's got to hold him out here to be a tie ball game. Yeah, if you're Coco, you can't get down on yourself here. They're going to make plays and score points in this game. You just have to match them. Yep. And it's going to be no good. Yep. Well, he's going to go on his feet. Well, that's got to yeah. be the end of it. All right, so 8.57 to play in the first half. And Vero Beach ties this thing up at six. And I got a feeling, Double D, that this is going to be this type of a game. Yeah, yep. Yeah, next two games, Coco and Vero, it's going to be a, a dog fight back and forth. You know, I, I have to say something that you did a couple years ago. You sent me a picture. You remember this, and I was like, I do. We need to get back to it. It's getting that time of the year again. And uh, going to go look at some Christmas lights. Oh, Christmas lights. lights. Yeah, we need but to do hey, something cool like and, that. And yeah. now you can judge Billy and me because he's three doors down from me. Okay. And, All now, right. and now I'm getting... Uh, slack from him because and his family because he's already got his stuff up. Billy does? Yes! Ahead of you? Yes! Yeah. Oh no. And but but, but, but Billy, uh, may live, Billy may live to regret that decision <laughs> because of what you put up and the amount of things that you put up. You may just completely engulf his house this I, year. I can see I it. actually gave him some stuff last year but that's why I said that what I did on the broadcast over there. I'm like might want to take down your blow-ups. It's going to rain on Wednesday. <laughs> and that's a direct kick to so an opportunity here. Oh. He's going to slip right around the 47-yard line of the Tigers. So here we go. And Coco will take over with good field position here with 8.51 to play in uh, in the quarter. Let me borrow those headsets. I'm going to bring yeah, Seth yeah, yeah. on okay. here. For a couple minutes, and uh, Seth Gibson from uh, Gamers R Us. Seth, pop those puppies back on here for those that didn't hear you in the 11U game. And we had, oh, I don't know, three different streams because we couldn't get a good signal in that game. So uh, please welcome in Seth Gibson on the top of your screen. You see the Gamers R Us uh, logo, and Seth will talk about all about that here in a second. But first and foremost, Seth, you're a Coco Tiger, aren't you? Oh, yeah, 100% Alan. And here we go, Seth, uh, and we got whistles and a delay of game, yeah. So, Seth, uh, for those that weren't with us in that first broadcast, how did you become a passionate Tiger fan? Uh, basically just uh, moved here about 25 years ago, and then all four of my kids are, went to Cocoa High or are currently going to Cocoa High, so we just started going to youth football, and... It just got the passion kind of grew from there. Got you throws. This is, well, that was nearly picked off. Now, gamers are us. We got the holidays coming up. And, you know, there are a lot of gamers out there and a lot of different types of gamers as well. Board games, dice games, card games, all of that. So, kind of, if you would, give us a little synopsis of gamers are us once again. So, basically, yeah, we just, like, try to get anyone in there that's, into any type of the nerddom, whether it's like magic, Pokemon, you can play Warhammer, D&D, &D, 
pretty much anything under the sun you can think of. We, you know, we try to carry it up there, gamers. And I tell you what, Seth does a terrific job on uh, Facebook, and that's where you can find him. This is a give up the middle big hole, and that's a great pursuit tackle by Vero Beach. And they have made some sort of adjustment from that last drive there, Seth, because uh, Coco ran the ball there for a 70-yard touchdown that time. Nothing doing, and that's a major that's loss on down. the play. And that's going to bring up third down at about 18, 19 to go. For those of you that don't know, we were able to bring you Coco's football playoff game last night because of Seth and Gamers R Us. Those games are not cheap. The FHA charges an arm and a leg today. We don't, and listen, as much as I love the kids, we can't sit here for 12 hours for free. There's a cost to broadcast. Seth took care of that as well. Seth is a prime sponsor with Brevard Sports Network and does whatever he can to make sure that all youth and prep sports are broadcast. Coco throws, caught. That is a bullet. And I tell you what, M16, Micah threw a great pass there. That should have been caught. It is not. It's going to bring up fourth down. All right, so you're going to be releasing the big uh, – You'll be releasing the big Black Friday sales coming up Monday and Tuesday. But, Seth, and I want to have you explain this again. I know you did on the 11U broadcast, but there are different gamers out there, and there are different types of games. Talk about that, if you would. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, everyone thinks of, like, sports, but you have eSports now, which is a big culture, uh, video gaming, and then even board games. Like, I didn't – board games and card games, I didn't realize how big it was until I opened the store, like – we we actually sponsored teams to go nationally and play like Dragon Ball Super card game, and so it just it's, it's, it blows my mind how popular it is. Yeah, it's crazy, man. I watched this Netflix documentary on esports and watching how much it has grown and the money that these guys make and and what they do. And we just had a student athlete who went to Holy Trinity who now goes to St. Thomas University. Um, Pep, my man Pep down at St. Thomas University on the eSports St. Thomas University team does a terrific job. So, yes, it is huge. How about the dice and the or the board and uh, the card games and all? Yeah, I mean, uh, we also have, like, uh, free demos. You can come up and play, like, a bunch of different board games that you haven't played before. Uh, we have Warhammer, which is, like, a tabletop venture game. Oh, he faked the punt again, and this is not going to be a good decision. Not a good decision. He's still on his feet. Is he going to get away? And not this time. He's still Oh, up. he is still going. That would have been a great play if he had broken away, but he did not that time. And that is going to cost the Coco Tigers some massive field position there as Vero Beach with an opportunity to take away momentum here with 728 to play do not like the fact that maybe we had a fake punt there and all of a sudden vero beach will uh take over first and 10 at the coco 31 not a great decision i think they need to get back what they did last drive is they were they gashed them up the middle they, yeah and this drive they went east and west absolutely absolutely I mean, look, I mean, that, that's a heck of an effort that young man put forth, but you just sometimes have to kick it away. And the Tigers have already proved that by kicking it away. You can flip the field and didn't do it that time. And that is going to cost them, especially if Euro Beach capitalizes. This is Philip Flag. Will, it's going to be a false start, I believe. Yeah, so I'm jumping back five here. Seven twenty four to play in the opening half. Coco. And Vero tied at six, looking to throw wide open, nice back shoulder, and down inside the ten to the five. That's an outstanding pass to Lederick Wellmaker. Wellmaker turned and picked that off the shoulder pad, and uh, I tell you, Phil put that where only he could get that, Seth. Yeah, that was an amazing catch and throw. 
That's a beautiful shot. And now inside the Gamers R Us red zone. That is one heck of a play right there. My goodness gracious. As Bureau Beach looks to get into the end zone here. And this would be two straight drives in with which they have scored. And this is a sweep. And he cuts back inside, still on his feet. Holding. Touchdown. Oh, we got a hold, okay. Yeah. And, and, uh, he's going to yep, he's going to Yeah, it's going to be a holding. So that touchdown's coming back. Or is it? The officials are talking. Let's see. Holding. And we're gonna have yep, holding it is indeed Indians. coming back. See, that just going to tell you how much I know. Looks like a good block, but I, <laughs> I thought it was a good block. And that's gonna move the ball back to the Tigers eighteen yard line. So the ball goes all the way back to the eighteen and yard line now. Six and uh, 6.44 to play in the half at Bureau Beach. Look at it first and goal now from the 18, and they're going to take a timeout and talk about it. Have a timeout on the field, and while they do that, I'm going to pause for station identification. Since when can have these pausing for station identification? <laughs> the PA guy taking a station identification break. I like it. I like it. I like it. And I think the general consensus here is Coco should have punted that football. Now, I wonder if the decision was to punt the ball and the young man made the choice to try to fake it himself and saw something there a lot of times. Coaches will give their better players the leeway to do something like that. And, you know, I don't know if that was the case there. Um, but if you're going to make that decision in a championship game, for lack of a better term, you better damn make sure you get there. And on fourth and 15, that looked awfully difficult to make. And Bureau Beach had tightened down pretty good. So we'll see if it comes back to haunt Bureau or Coco or not. Keep your eye on the matchup here on the outside. That's Jackson Franco going up against uh, Cameron Stetson. But Jackson plays, well, actually Phillips is not in. So I was going to say Jackson plays 7v7 with Phillips. He knows him. And they're going to throw. And that's a good job there. Incomplete. Coverage that time by Malachi Teeter. Malachi Teeter's got a brother that does pretty good at the next level. That's uh, Nikki Teeter for the Coco Tigers. Actually, I thought that was Jackson, and it was Malachi. So that's a good play by Malachi Teeter. Nikki Teeter having a great year, of course. Who's having a better year than Javen Boggs? And we got a false start again by, and right now Vero Beach is self-destructing, Seth. You know, I, I mean, I, you know, you don't, you hate to see this, but it, you, you don't see this in just this level. You see this in the NFL. You see this in college a lot, where teams get inside the red zone. It's like all of a sudden they forget how to line up, and play football. Well, I was watching earlier, and I was speaking to colleagues up here. Uh, I, I was watching the backs, and they weren't setting a lot of the times they were before the plays. So I don't know if, that, if that's what they're calling them for this drive or not. Yeah. Oh, look at this hole. And that's straight up the gut. This is a Derek Wellmaker again. And he gets all the way back to the 11. And this is going to bring up third down and goal. Actually, they marked the ball at the 10 on a great run from Wellmaker. 6-10 to play here in the opening half. We're tied at six. Phillips back in at quarterback, and they're going to spread it out. We're going to go five wide receivers set. Wellmaker's going to be on the inside slot for Vero Beach. On the outside, going to be Malachi, uh, Makai White. I'm sorry, not Malachi, but Makai White to the left side. Phillips rolls, stiff arms. Oh, what a backside tackle and a pursuit. 
That's a great play. By Trenton Hamilton. And it's fourth and goal. And the Indians have got to get into the end zone. They need to reach pay dirt here if they are going to make use of Coco's faux pas of a fake punt. 5-13 and running. If you're Coco, you got to be disciplined here in your secondary. Got to be disciplined. I don't know if I would put 13 on zero. Oh, man. Uh-oh. And he cuts back inside. He won't Stop get there. Short. Short. That is a – he couldn't be any closer, but he is going to be short of a touchdown. He was definitely uh, – this is crazy how short he was. I mean, Coco has the ball. how, how close he was, but where they're going to mark this football. It might be a Coco recovery in the end zone. I think Did that's he fumble? Yeah, Coco's got the ball back there saying they have it. I think that's what they're discussing if you fumbled it before you got in. We'll see what it is here. Touchback. Yep, that's a touchback. Coco football. Good looking out, Seth. So Coco really catches a break here because – if he has stopped there, yeah. then Coco's first and goal at the one, or first and ten at the one. Yeah. Now it's a touchback, so the ball comes out to the 20-yard line now. Yeah, I mean, it worked out great for him. First thing, you get away with the, you know, the fake punt, and right. then your defense steps up. So maybe Coach Tony knew that and was just, you know, setting up his defense you know, yeah. to make that play. Yep. At least that's how, what I would say if I was a coach. You know, <laughs> that's how I drew it up. That's exactly how I drew it up. I knew you guys would be, would, would have my back. Yeah. You guys would pick each other up and we'd get this stop and we're going to go get our own touchdown now. Boy, I tell you, that couldn't have worked out any better because the touchback brings the ball to the 20. So a good job there, 442 to play in the half. Now, if you're Coco and you don't pick up any yards, punt the football. Because I can't give it to you twice, Seth. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Day becoming night here at DC Roofing Stadium. Alan Slaughterzinski, Seth Gibson, and Daryl Durand here. Daryl has stepped out. He'll be back. And there's a give. And he, uh, nowhere to go there. And since the 70-yard rushing touchdown, the Tigers have either had negative or no yards rushing, and that's not a good thing. They keep trying to go outside. Yeah, east and west is not going to work against the team with the speed of Bureau Beach. Just not going to happen. Same thing. I mean, it's tough to run east and west on Coco. 4.09 to play in the third, or, yeah, in the third, in the first half. And there's a there's pitch. And he's going to be ran down from behind. Now, Reed's going to pick up Three. two, three. It's going to be third and six, seven, but still trying to run east and west again. Why did Coco take a timeout there? Yeah, I think I think it's a good timeout to talk about this because, you know, listen, it was the fourth down play that they had where they scored a 70-yard touchdown. So, I, you know, we'll see what they do here, but this is third down, and I don't think they're going to be going for this. So, they definitely, this is where they need to pick the first down up because I, for the life of me, cannot see them thinking about faking another punt here. I maybe would let the time run out right before uh, you get that uh, delayed game call just to give Vera a little less time to work with. I don't know. Maybe. Or, they yeah, see you know. 336, third down. Uh, yeah, that, that's not going to work unless you pick up a first down here and then you got to continue with the drive. So we'll see. We'll see how this all plays out. With M16 back there, that is Micah Knight. All right. Yeah, but we say all this, and the next thing could be a touch down. So. That's, that's exactly <laughs> right. Turn around, hand it off, and there they go. 75 yards or four through six yards for a touchdown. 
Ooh. So that'll be fourth and seven now on the tip pass. That's going to bring up fourth down. It looks like seven to go. Yeah, if they didn't call that timeout and ran it there, be down under two minutes. Yep. Also, our concession. But they are punting. We that is, yeah, <laughs> that is a good sign. Well, no, I don't know. Here comes, uh, here comes Norris Reed. <laughs> yes, sir. So yeah, Norris Reed. And the punt is up. Oh, oh straight oh, in there. No, went yeah. straight up in the air straight and up. takes a Vero Beach bounce. bounce. That's going to be a seven-yard punt. Maybe that's why they kept going for it on fourth down because yeah. they can't punt it. I mean, it could <laughs> be, uh, but after the seven-yard punt, it's going to be Vero Beach football at the Coco 28-yard line, 29-yard line. Incredible. Three twenty-two remaining into the half, and usually that's about the time you want to make it down to the concession stand before the lines get too long. Or maybe you want to try some honey wings. This is very important, drive. Yeah, I mean, and don't forget about Soul Sushi Number Nine. Coco, I think, deliver. gets the ball to start the second half. Bureau Beach got it to start the game, so. First and 10 for the Indians from the Coco 29. This is Wellmaker. And Wellmaker with a great cut outside. Wellmaker down the sidelines. And the Derek Wellmaker is pushed out of bounds at about the 13 yard line, 14 yard line. And right now, Vero Beach with the momentum here with 3.13 to go. The fact that Wellmaker gets out of bounds, stops the clock. It's a first down at the 13. The Indians can still pick up a first down if they get to the three here. Plenty of time. They have no need to rush anything here if you're Bureau Beach. If you're Coco, you need a turnover. And a snap. Handoff. More some more of that. Yeah. That looks like Hamilton on the play. Hamilton gets in there. But Bureau's doing a great job of sealing that inside. Black is getting yards outside. On the play, make it second and 12. So that's going to bring up second down oh, and right. about right. ten and a half so calls. Yeah, ten and a half. Right. She's right on time. Two thirty-six. Tick tock, tick tock. Here, clock mm -hmm. is not. Is it moving? Yeah, it's moving. Yeah. That's why I kind of would try to bleed the clock a little bit last drive. I mean, still with a minute and a half at this spot, I don't think it makes a difference. Yeah. No. There we go, Vero. It's going to be zero. Oh, hey. that is, you know what? That's the, <laughs> that's just simply saying you're going no further, young man. And wrapping him up and bringing him to the ground is uh, uh, R. John Jordan. So now it's going to be third down. Third down and 14. Third, down and 13. Oh, third and 13, 14, we'll call it. 146 to go. So Vero Beach is set this right. Vero Beach is going to take their good old time running these two plays right here. They could conceivably take a minute and five seconds off. I think they're going to run something to the wide side here and try to get the quarterback outside. Get him all over the edge over there. Snap. Quarterback. He's picking his way. He's looking. Oh, he's oh, close. Wow. Caught. Down. Is that a touchdown? It is. Great job by Vero Beach to convert. And how about the throw and the catch wide open on the left-hand side underneath. I thought he was going to take off when he dumped it, throws it, caught, touchdown. And with 113 to play in the half, Vero Beach takes their first lead of the night they lead it 12 to 6. With great awareness as no he wasn't past the line of scrimmage and gets a wide open receiver there and yeah the the sure did coming up at halftime absolutely nothing 113 we take a little break here and then we'll be back with the second half and then the 12u game 
And uh, about six quarters of football left here today. On Brevard Sports and Network. Straight up the gut. Did he get in? He does. So it's going to be 13 to 6 with a buck 13 to go. We'll step aside, update the scoreboard, and be back in just a moment. Uh, we were just Seth and I. Seth just noticed Coach Tony was not happy about something. What I think he was not happy about was I think he thought that he was down before he got into the end zone. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I I can see where Tony may have a case, but you know that that that's that's a good call. I mean, I, I you know you would need an NFL instant replay to decipher whether or not that knee was on the ground. No clue okay. what happened yeah, there. I just got confirmation that that wasn't the real kick. Got to wait on the whistle. Got to wait on the whistle. Young man kicked the ball before he was told. I Can't do that. I, hear that I think Coco might have taken it because that ball is going out of bounds. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. 113, 13 to 6. 13 is unlucky for the Tigers at the moment. Coco looking to win their third championship of the day. And, and this one will go the other ground. way. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Had to pick it up. up by Young. And Young. now, right you know, set up torn what to do here. If, if you're Coco. Of time for Coach I probably wouldn't do anything Dallas fancy. Just yeah. try to do dives up the middle and I, see what would I happen. I would think if I could get another one of those big, quick, quick dive touchdowns, that'd be sweet, right? But I certainly wouldn't go throwing the ball all over the gridiron here. Yeah, I'd That's keep right. it simple. Not anything, not, not any stretch Check plays. Don't let them try to rip Southern it. Ice. I completely agree. Also, 108 to get to the half, to get the ball to start the third quarter. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't think I would do anything really uh, all, all, ultra stressful here. Remember, when you put the ball in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. So. Yeah. Could be first and ten from the thirty. First and ten. Up. Oh, that's oh, going to be a false start, and that's not a good start. So it's going to be first and fifteen on delay a game. That's the Tigers' second delay a game, not a false start. Game here. Third delay game. Yeah, it's okay. Third. Yeah, they got to get that figured out because they can't keep sure starting their drives in negative. No, no, playing behind the stick. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And that is, that, I mean, that's that's going to be. They had a player trotting on at the end there. And that should be a legal shift. And it's got to be because I don't even think he got set. They didn't throw anything. Yeah, he wasn't moving towards the line. He was moving away from the line. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess they. I guess he was. So they didn't get him. I guess he got lucky. All right. Yeah, can he be moving backwards, just not forward? Yeah, and he was definitely moving backwards. <laughs> All right, Tigers catch a break there. I don't know. They. Yeah, they lose. Well, no. I mean, yeah. Oh, no, they called it. They called it. Okay, they did call it. All right. I was going to say, the first down marker, didn't, I mean, the line of scrimmage marker didn't move. It's back to five yards. Looks like we're going to have a legal participation. Okay. Yeah, that's what it is, number two. For the Tigers. It came from over there. I don't know. what I, I, The illegal participation, and now... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. First and 35. 16, That's, take it. Oh, my goodness. I don't believe they're throwing the ball this deep. 
Incomplete pass stops the clock. Oh. I'll fix it. I'll fix the score. They got it going on. Just give me a second. I'm sorry. I don't know why I stopped at 11. It's my bad, though. I promise it ain't on purpose, okay? I promise it ain't on purpose. But I will fix the score. Thanks for the heads up, though, because I wouldn't have noticed it. And it had been all the way through there at halftime, and everybody would have killed me. So I owe you. Second down. And that's what you want to do. Straight dive ahead. And Young is going to be brought down after about a gain of two yards. Are they going to try to get another play in here? I don't know, man. I think I, I, I think if you're the Tigers, you just get out of here, man. With uh, I think you just get out of here. Yeah. Like I, I certainly am not throwing the football here. Well, they're just trotting into play now. There's only eight seconds left. Yeah. Yeah, they're not going to make it. So that's going to take us to the half here. And there it is. So we have reached the half. With your score, the Vero Beach Fighting Indians 13 and the Coco Tigers 6. Seth, thanks for joining me on this, man. I appreciate it. We'll be back at the start of the third corner. Oh, I don't know, in 10 minutes.
All right, here we go. Start of quarter. Number three, and I, I don't know what any of that was to start. Somebody flip that light switch. I mean, I guess I'm old-fashioned. I kind of need, yeah! Let there be light. As we get ready to go here, 9.54, third quarter. We are back at it here. As the Coco offense takes the field. At the 37, and it was something different here. So we're going to have doubles now split way wide out. You saw the shift in the formation. Bureau Beach showing blitz. They bring it. And they execute it. I'll tell you what. Oh, you can't do that. But they get away with it. And, yeah, that, I'd say he's wrestled down. And that is a, uh, <laughs> that is, uh, it, look, they brought the blitz and, and the pressure and got, the, got on. So that's a loss of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, second and 17. And Coach Anthony's not happy about that. And the same shift again deployed by the Tigers offense. M16 wants it. He's got it. They blitz again. This time a quick bubble. And he breaks it. He could go. Might be gone. And that's what happens when you blitz. Down the sidelines. Touchdown, Coco Tigers. That is a quick bubble screen beating the blitz. And how about it from M16, Micah Knight to number six, Norris Reed, and Reed with his second touchdown of the night. And the Tigers are a point away from tying this thing up. Right down the sidelines he went. That young man's got incredible sideline balance, does he not? For a big guy. And we're going to have offsides. So they're going to move the ball up. And Jackson Franco is going to try for two points here. So Jackson Franco on for the extra point. If he nails this, we've got ourselves. Well, I said time. What, what's going on? What's the score? Oh, well, it was 13 to 6. Yeah, that's definitely wrong. Got yeah. Wrong. Franco's kick is good. Oh, what'd they do with the score there, though? I don't know. Okay, well, anyway, Coco, they got to fix that scoreboard. They got Vero up 19. No, that's because we're the Cobras again. Yeah, okay. So... That should be a 14. Yeah, should, yeah, there we go. Okay, so they change it. So Coco takes the lead on the two-point conversion by Jackson Franco, 14-13. 14-13, and Coco. I, I tell you what, they beat, a, they, they beat a blitz with a bubble screen, and it worked. So there you go. And Daryl Duran be joining us here. Jackson Franco who just kicked the two-minute extra or the two-minute point. It's getting late, folks. I'm telling you, man. You start doing this will be my fifth game today here coming up. And, yes. You get to that point. And we got one more to go after this. And Jackson Franco with a foot on him. Bounced off a tackle. Too high, got tackle him low. Yep. They run into each other. He does. Oh, look at this run back. But he is stopped. I tell you what, that could have been all the way back here at the 20. That young man kept on going. And he manages to get the ball out across or at least near the 35. It'll be the 34 for Vero here. So, Coco. 
it looked bleak on that first offensive play, but they come back and, and get the touchdown. That's huge. Yes, it is. Big time. And the Coco defense comes out and stuffs. Yeah, I was down there behind Coco at halftime, and they, 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 they were getting an adjustment, put it that way. Yeah, I can imagine probably peeling some paint off the post. <laughs> Seen that before a time or two, especially over at Richard Dick Blake Stadium. Depends who you want to have. Oh, nice throw. And that is a, oh, my goodness gracious. Did you see that catch? That's an, that's an unbelievable I, catch. I mean, that it's, is number 10 again over there. And first of all, you want to talk about the throw from Phillips. Second of all, the catch by uh, Cravion Love was just incredible. Just went up and got it at the highest point. Yeah, no doubt. And, I mean, he jumped between two Tigers to go get that ball, and he's the shortest guy of them. That's just a great play right there. Just a great play. Throws again. Did he catch that? I was going to say that oh was. Oh, my goodness gracious. That was going to be a back, nice backside catch. But he put that where only he could get that, and, and he did that on purpose, and that's just a great play by, you know, a 12-year-old quarterback. You just don't. I mean, you don't see that a lot. No, you don't. And these look, these kids. I know these kids go to a lot of camps these days, but that still takes a lot of raw athletic ability to execute. And we're gonna get false start. False start by Bureau Beach. So that's now second and fifteen for Bureau. These teams, Daryl, keep shooting themselves in the foot at times, but it doesn't seem to matter. They keep working their way out of it, but you don't want to be that team doing that in the fourth quarter. No, you don't. No, you got to get get out of that uh, situation right now. So 7.31 to play in the third. And the snap. Oh, that is just a great play by the Coco defense. You know what? He wrapped him up, and I think he completely surprised Phillips by being there, and that's just a great job by number nine. I'll tell you what, we've called his name a lot today, and that's Trenton Hamilton. Hamilton with a great play, and that's going to make it third down in 5, 10, 15, about 25. Yep. Yeah, he just went right through the Vero Beach blocker and just, I mean, it was a good one-on-one -on -one going through the block, getting to the um, guy with the ball and just making a one-on-one -on -one tackle. Yep. And again, Coco with another good tackle. And that time, I believe it is number one who opened this game with a big stop. And that is Jaheem, Jaheem Scott. And now that's going to bring up fourth down and a trip back to the 7-7-2. 6.30 to go, clock running. Vero Beach facing fourth down. And the momentum in this one has clearly shifted to the baby blue, black, and orange. Yep, you heard me say that right. And Coach Hadley did welcome the Rockledge Coco Raiders. Yeah. Okay. So we'll see if they fake this. <clears throat> false start, yeah. Yes, indeed, that was a false start. Now if I was Coco, I'd move my man back at least 10 yards. Yeah. Yeah, because we've already seen he could punt. And that looks like number eight. John <coughs> 5.53 to go here. Yeah, he's too shallow. And the punt is up. Well, oh, well, it bounced. It came off his foot sideways, though. This is Young, gets outside. And he'll be brought down at the 40 yard line. 
We got a late flag flying in. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a personal foul, but who's it going to go against is going to be the question. And we have a couple of players down over here. We got a player down over on the Coco sideline as well. But he's up now. So let's see where this 15 yards is going. Well, look like we're going to have personal foul, personal foul, helmet to helmet. Against Coco. No, it's helmet to helmet. That. So that's going to go against Coco, whatever it is, 15 yards. Helmet to helmet. Yeah. And that's what that was. That's what that's what the two fish together is, is helmet to helmet. So Coco's going to start about their own 24, Allen. Yeah, but 546 here in the third. So A double triangle. Haven't seen. Yeah, that's wild, man. I, you got six wide receivers. Man. That's going to be a uh, rough in the passer. Yep, they're going to run at 15 yards. So this is going to put the Coco uh, Tigers up at the 39 because that's a roughing the passer penalty, clearly deserved. But I've never seen a six-wide receiver truck set, have you? No. That was the first time I've seen the, the triangle, yeah. After the ball was gone, that's wild. he hit him in the back. I'll take it. And that will result in a 15-yard penalty. So now we're going to restart where they were originally at. Right, correct. 49-yard or 39-yard the line. They're coming out with that two-triangle set again. Yep, there it is. There's one there. And this is I've and there's one at the top. So yeah, I mean this is this is a double triangle. And they go to the left side this time with it. Cuts back inside and Bureau Beach reads it nicely. If he could have got it to the outside, they had it blocked. Yeah. Yeah, somebody's got to be on the line of block. But yeah. But it's a sneaky way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you can't have six receivers. You can only have five. Second down for Coco. And he's going to keep. That's a good job there. Getting some positive yards. Yeah, because that's five, six yards, five yards to be second and five, and the third and five now. That's Micah down. Yeah, it didn't. Well, we know he's going to miss at least one play because he's down and he's got to come off. So I'm not sure who the Tigers' backup quarterback is, but we'll find out. All right, Mike and I up and walking on his own. And that's your quarterback, and you definitely want that. But he's going to be off on a critical right. third down here. All right. As soon as they clear him out, they're going to start the play clock here. 25 second play clock, and not necessarily because we're going to have a timeout. Coco. Co Coco's going to take a timeout here. And now, if they took the timeout, he should be able to. He should be able to come back in. Yeah. Huh? He can't come back in? Yeah, I don't know. Walk it off. Shake it off. Taylor Swift, could shake it off. <laughs> yeah, I just said that. Nah, he's on the bench. They're going to check him out. He ain't coming back in this play. But, yeah, that, that is correct, Daryl. Yeah, if he took the time out, he could come back in. And, uh, you know, back in my day, they spray some freeze on it. <laughs> yeah. Even at eight years old. Nah, I think y'all used to get shots back then, didn't you? Well, yeah, we would take, <laughs> yeah. Yes, we did. I mean, <laughs> y'all got shots. Yes, we did. <laughs> yeah, we did. They might need any quarters home. 
Sarzanski. <laughs> yeah, Coach, I can't wait to not be able to All walk right, at 50. <laughs> Thanks. Third down and five. And it's down. Oh, yeah, uh, well, that's what happens when you back up quarterback. <coughs> he turned the wrong way, and that's misdirection, Daryl. And that's what happens. Yes. Yeah, but when you, you when you don't play that position a lot. Yep. And you kind of come in and feel as you, you could tell as soon as he got the snap, he was confused what was going on. Yeah, he turned one way, and the ball carrier was the other. And it's not his fault. He didn't play the position all that often, but. Fourth and 11 now, 420, and the clock running. Fast-moving third quarter. I, I'd, send, I'd send that kid in here to boot it. Yeah, I think you got to punt this. I don't think there's any yes, shot they go sir. for this. But you never know if they're going to fake it again. That is correct. Two fakes today. One of them turned into a uh, – was it – he right. scored, right? Oh, yeah, touchdown, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now the rest of the punt team is. Yeah, he's kicking. Oh, nope. Well, that's not a fake. He had to pull that down. That is not a fake. That punt was going to get blocked, Daryl. Yeah, he, he rushed he rushed that because I didn't think everybody was set, to be honest well, with you. Well, here was the problem. He wasn't far back enough. I don't think he had the distance to get the kick off in the first place. But he had to pull the ball in because it was going to get blocked. That's not a fake. And uh, so, yeah. But nonetheless, still going to give. Bureau Beach outstanding field position and plus territory at the Coco Tiger. What's it? 41. 41 yes. Yeah. 41 yard line here. All right, let's see who shows up this series. Three, yeah. 344 in the third. Guards pull. Good pursuit there by Coco. Yes, it was. Yeah, they're going to give him a decent spot. Gain of about three. Yeah, 3.23 to go. Second down and seven now for Vero. Under center is the quarterback turn. Oh, straight up the gut. Big man carries the load and gets the first down. Ball came out, and it's Coke. Oh, they say he was down. Yeah, I was fixing to say I heard a whistle blow. Oh, they just threw a flag on uh, the Coco sidelines. Now, this can either be a sideline warning or a 15-yard penalty. We're about to find out. Now, obviously... The man down there, I'll just say, I'll just tell you this. They don't like the call, the Coco sidelines. Mm -mm. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Sideline warning. So they only pick up the warning. So they pick up a sideline warning. And a player down. So, I'll I tell you, man, they got lucky on that one because I thought for sure he was picking up 15. So, it's going to be first and 10 Bureau Beach. How it came out, yeah, I was like, yeah, this ain't yeah, good. yeah, I thought for sure it was 15. Sideline warning, we've got a first down. Tell y'all something about the sideline warning. That's my favorite penalty. Really. Yeah. For real. Because it's a warning. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, you know, Hadley makes a good point. It's his favorite penalty because it's a warning the first time. The second time is a 15-yard penalty. The third time, somebody gets ejected. Serenity Smith, I have your key up in the press box. I'm looking for Serenity Smith. I have your key up in the press box. Can you imagine if you're Serenity Smith and you have been looking for your keys all day and you cannot find them, and Hadley comes on and says, I have your keys in the press box. Man, what a relief that's got to yes, be. Yes, yes, it does. Keys, a wallet, or a pocketbook, man. I mean, you lose those and then get it back. Oh, it's like Christmas. She can make her way up here. I have her keys. And here's a sweep. And that's a hold coming back. Clear hold. Ooh. It's a good tackle, but it doesn't matter because 
That was a blatant hold. That's a blind side downfield, but I don't know if it was called. No, they're just going to. So, Daryl, what's the skinny on the 14U game coming up next? Who won that? I think Vero's won the uh, – no. Coco won the uh, 14U matchup earlier. Okay. 2.42 to play. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why they doing that. They all got to go to the restroom, probably. Yeah, well, I can tell you this. They are, well, Coco's going out the gate. Boy, that was interesting there for a minute. So now it's going to be second down and 20 for Vero here. And we have got number one back at quarterback for Vero. That is, who is that? Number one is... Makai White. Rolling out. Yeah, he throws, and, and that's just good job. I, and, and again, it's Trenton, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Trenton Hamilton that puts the pressure on it. Hamilton has had a great game defensively for the Tigers. And he might have got that ball tipped a little bit too. Where's Coco, 14-U team going? I don't know. Someone started walking in the stands. Someone will buy hibachi. Okay. Who knows? Third down and 20, and flags fly. False start on Vero. That'll back him up five more. It'll be third and 25. Maybe the Soul, the Soul Brothers over there are going to, you know, give him a little good luck or something. I don't know. I don't know. 144 now, but third and 25. This is four down territory if you're Vero Beach. And, with Phillips in there, you can expect, keep your eye on number 10, too. Because right well, right now they got two on one. Somebody better get over to the right side of the. And, okay, it looks like we're going to get it covered up now. But Phillips. Oh. Yeah, delay a game. Wow. Now you're going back another five yards. Yeah, that's going to be third and 30 now. That back them up. Third down and 30 here. Third in the tropical storm, Sarah, to come. You're not kidding. Speaking of uh, storms, uh, stay uh, tuned to Space Coast weather. Chris Padano. Yeah, he right? does a great job. Yeah, Padano does a good job there. Right, and Phillips gets outside. Oh, wow. Lots of room to run here. Great ankle tackle. By, uh, actually, that one's my number six that time. That is uh, Norris Reed, who uh, has had himself play the game. So fourth down now and about 16 or 17 for Vero Beach. And with 113, 117 to play, I should say. Uh, Vero Beach looking at fourth and uh, 15. They got them spread out. No backs in the backfield. Five on five. He is brought down short, and that is a big-time turnover on downs by that Coco Tiger defense. The, the, the defense is winning the battle in the trenches. Yeah, they're wearing them down a little bit here, and then under a minute to play, and that's unusual to see. Vero Beach undefeated this season and a bigger team, so it's kind of a shocker to see at this point. 51.6 in the third. Yeah, somebody said uh, regardless of who wins, 
this game is so much better than the first time these two teams got together. Coco was just on a different planet in that game. I mean, they weren't – it's like they didn't even show up to play. Bureau just ran yeah. rough shot over them, took advantage of them as great teams do. But, yes, a much different contest this time. First and ten for – we got – is Malachi Knight back yet? No? No, that ain't my boy. And that is ten of the eleven players, nine of the eleven or eight of the eleven players from Bureau Beach in on that tackle. And what something uh, Coach Billy always says, you see the offensive line turn around taking a pol Polaroid, that ain't good. Malachi Knight getting ready to check back in and here. I'm like gonna let it roll. Fourth quarter coming up here on Brevard Sports Network. All right, final 10 on the clock here. Second down and 11 for Coco. And flags and a false start. That's going to go to second and 16. Uh, it's not like we haven't seen a few of them in the last nope. five minutes. So that'll back them up five yards. And uh, I wish I had a button I could just push. So that'll back them up five yards. <laughs> There's a 15-yarder. You know, people have stamps that sign their name. That's what we need, Daryl. Oh, yeah. Five-yard penalty. <laughs> yeah. Sell soundboard with all that on it. Coco in tight. Quick pitch. Oh, pass wide open. Oh, wow. Look at this. The running back pass. This is a speed, a foot race. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Coco Tigers on the halfback pass. And, and he barely got that off, too. Yeah. He took a hit. Man. I'm trying to get the number. Was it eight? It was eight. Was that eight? That was incredible. It was either eight or nine. Who, who did he? Is he Marquez Young or Trenton Hamilton? One of the two. I, I couldn't tell if it was eight or nine, but it was an absolutely gorgeous pass and a beautifully executed catch and run. It was a foot race and won by Coco. That's Way offsides. offsides. Jackson. Wow. I did not think he was going to get that off. Well, I tell you, and even when he did get it off, I didn't think he had a chance to complete it because of the fact that he had to rush it. Yeah, it looked short. It looked short. What a play call, though. What a yes. great play call. They might have stole that play from Coach Billy. <laughs> or Coach Billy let him borrow it. Yeah. This is going to make it a two – if, if Jackson Franco converts this, it's a two-score game. Come on, Orange Gloves. 
Malachi Teeter. And the ball is no. that was a way. It's not much that could happen there. All right, so it is. Wow. Wow. 20 to 30. Right there was a missed opportunity for Coco on that extra point because now it's 20 to 13. And he really wanted to see Jackson get that extra point there, but he he did he he did prior when they got the penalty. So that Tiger defense, Daryl's going to have to come up big time yeah. again here. Yes, they do. Nine thirty-three to play in the game. What a unbelievable play call that was i'm still thinking about that play because i was watching him almost get hit and i was like man the ball ain't gonna get their ball and it gets there and he did the old run from an alligator went this way went back and got away from the defender yeah no he did he definitely did uh Coco gets set to kick off here. Let's see where Jackson Franco boots this one. I'll try to boot it as far as you can away from him. Yep. And this is just a little spiral kick here. Picked up across the 35. Uh-oh. Oh, I thought he lost the ball. I did too. That's a great run back, though. He hangs on to the ball and gets it to the Coco. 44. Yeah, I gave up a lot of return there to Vero, so the Coco defense has got to come out and make a statement here. You're Vero, and you got a guy like Phillips. I, I may even think about taking a shot right here. I, I really would. Why not? You got a quarterback that can get the ball down the field. Correct. You got a couple of wide receivers, and you got four downs to play with here. So I, I think in one of these downs, you got to take a shot. Why not do it on first? Directly to number 23 there. He's be in Still on his feet. I can't believe his knees didn't go down. They are hitting out there. That was just a great pursuit by Coco. I don't like the call by Vero there. I don't either. He had no blockers out in front of him, and Coco just did a great job pursuing the ball. They weren't fooled. I'm going to tell y'all something. There's another player that has joined this game who y'all can't see, and his name is Momentum. <laughs> <laughs> There's another player that has joined this game, and his name is Momentum. He has blockers. And, and out of bounds. Out of bounds. And that's going to bring up third down already. They had a Coco player fall down oh. trying to get off the field. Like we have somebody down over here yep. On the zero beach sideline. And now, 40 to play in the game. 840. And that's going to be number zero. He's up and walking on his own, though. So you think your Ravens going to pull it off tomorrow? No. No, I do not think the Ravens are going to win tomorrow. I, I, I just, I, I don't see it tomorrow. Maybe in Baltimore, but not in Pittsburgh. Yeah. 8.40. Yeah, I guess Dallas is going to tank the rest of the season on my end. It looks like it. <laughs> but, buddy, it could be worse. Oh, I know. No, no, actually, oh. I don't think I could I was going to say your quarterback could be getting straight season ending surgery. And the snap. Quarterback. Yeah. He's going to take off. Phillips, he's got to get there. And, and that's just a great play. Down. And cutting him Come off on. was uh, Jaheim Scott did a great job cutting the angle down. And that's going to bring up. Oh, oh man, Daryl. We got good old fashioned drama now. Right now would be a good time for the Coco Tigers crowd to get behind their defense. We got fourth down. Mm -hmm. Fourth and seven. Fourth and seven. 
And this is the play of the game to this point. Looks like Hadley was in my head. Vero's taking a long time to call this. Yeah, you can't pick up five here. The back judge has not begun to move his hand yet, so they're still okay. And here we go. Quarterback throws. That could be, nope, that is not. Uh, uh, no uh, flags. Yeah, well, I don't think there should have been. And Coco holds here, and now with 7.42 to play, an opportunity as the Tigers' defense holds. Knocking on the door. Yeah. She was still 13, 13. Well, I had an, uh, an update already that came across the board and said maybe it was a bad update because by now you would have seen that they would have got the extra point. So I think somebody screwed that up. Yeah. Because it came 19 to 13. I was like, great. Coco gets a first. They, they need to get two first downs. Yeah, yeah and because and that would at least put them well – well, let's see here. Yeah, across the midfield strike. Falls out. And Coco got it back. Ooh. You can see Vero Beach putting their hands on their helmet. That ball came out and was free. That was a hit. He got stuck like Chuck. And uh, I'm here to tell you, that ball was wandering around. Mm. Coco trying to give it right back to him. Second down and 11 now. 7.15 in counting left in this ball game. However you want to call it, junior game, under, under 12 game. Oh, stuck again. Somebody did not. Oh, oh he, he go down. And Vero is not playing around defensively right now. Coco's offensive line needs to come to play a little harder right now. Fourth quarter, Tiger quarter, they say. Well, this is where it has to happen. And they are just letting people in. Third down and about 14 to go for Coco. 6.31 to play. Coco up by seven with the football. Vero Beach defending about as well as you can. It's third and 15. Low snap. Uh oh. That's knocked down. That's, yeah. that, that, that's, just, that's just the better that, of that. That was a dangerous pass. Yeah, it was. Highly inaccurate. punt yes is Franco the punter or? I don't know but they are bringing in the punt team yeah you got to boot this as far as you can that's what I believe number five or six is punt it away from him Timeout, Coco. And with 6-0 remaining in this ball game, the Coco Tigers. Take a look down on the sidelines. And there you see the contingent of Coco coaches. Well, Daryl, if they can get off 25, 30-yard punt here, 
it certainly would be beneficial, and it is going to be Jackson Franco to punt. Send the little guy out there to boot the yeah. ball as far as you can, bud. And the man standing for Vero is standing back at his own 43. Didn't his dad say a, a yard for every, uh, a dollar for every yard he uh, punts the ball? <laughs> yeah, a dollar for every yard. <laughs> Watch two, it. Hey, two, it. Two dollars in this case. Oh, Ooh. man, well, he had to rush that. Yeah. And that's going to be a one-yard punt. And that is not a good thing. And Vero Beach no. is going to get the ball with 543. He had to rush it. He did. They had sent the pressure. And and you really can't put that on your kicker. I mean, no. there, there's times that you, you can punt that ball there and almost get a, a, a running into the kicker. But then again, your risk of getting it blocked and them picking up and scoring six. Yep. Can't do that. 5.43 to play in the game. So basically, they just got turned over where they picked it up. Yep. All right, here we go. Okay. Timeout, Vero looks like. Yep. Gators got the ball first to goal to run. Your stream's faster than mine. <laughs> Heck yeah, touchdown. See, now it's saying 19. Who? Somebody at CBS needs to fix that. Now, we're going to finish 6-6. Six and six. I don't know. We could finish 7-6, and six, but I see us finishing 6-6 six and six as we beat the... Uh, uh, I'd, I'll get in trouble if I say what I want to say about Florida State. <laughs> and the oh, they got pressure. Oh, looks to throw. And uh, that's no, no. Oh, wow. That's a bad play. Like and they're going to talk about it. They need to pick that up. That's incidental contact. And that's not pass and, interference. And that's not uncatchable neither. Well. In high school and in youth, that's that that that's not. Oh, yeah. it okay. Yeah, they need to pick this flag up. This crew's got walkie-talkies on them, so I don't know. Oh, they're gonna call it. They call it. Wow, I don't like the call. But now Vero's got to take advantage. You know. You throw the ball where your guy's got one-on-one -on -one coverage. He did that, and he gets the penalty. So that's a smart play. Now you got wide, three wide receivers to the left. Tight ends to the is in tight on the right. I thought the I thought the referee that had the good view of that didn't throw the flag, which is the one in the middle of the field here. So yeah. Anyway. 541 to play and Fiero Beach is going to have the football right at the Gamers R Us red zone. They just moved it another five, so they're down to the 15. Oh, are they? Okay, so at the 15 now. It's a one possession, 20 to 13 Coco lead. Be at a 17 yeah, now they're moving it back I, to the 17. Well, because they got it wrong that last it, it's, time. It's like Price is Right Plinko. <laughs> yeah, right. Ooh, it looks throws, and that's just not a good pass right there. No, that should be a false start, but. Clock's 
clock stops at 535. One possession game here. Great game in this junior division. Yeah. And if people get confused, I'm still in the old school mode. I call it junior division. It's the under 12 or U12. Phillip throws. Nice. That was oh. a great play. Yeah, it was. That, that's a, you're right. That's just a great defensive play. It was a good ball. He let his receiver perfect, but the defender made a great play on it. He didn't put it where the receiver could catch it. Nope. Third down and 10 now. And Coco trying to force a four and out here. 5.28 to play in the game. Now they got a full back. They go into a heavy formation. That's a sweep. Oh, not. How did he get out? Of wow. Oh, and Coco just got another yeah, flag. That ain't. Yards. You got to keep your composure here. Got to keep your composure. That's, that, 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 that is now first and goal. Actually, it's a half the distance penalty. So it should be. It's probably going to be 20 yards of penalties, but like you said, it only can go so far. It's going to be at the 10, first and goal. All right, first and foul. Against Coco. Unsportsman light against Coco. And yeah, okay, so even a half the distance. Well, that's two penalties, so seven and a half. Three, that's a 10, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's about where it should be, yeah. So, Co Coach Tony's got to be careful he don't get thrown out here. Well, I, I think it, it wasn't Coach Tony that got the flag. It was one of his assistants. I saw it happen. So, it's first and goal at the sixth. False start that time. This is crazy, Darryl. We played about 15 minutes of football and about a minute rent went off the clock. I mean, I'm real, man. Hey, but I'm happy. Gators are in all blue and we're winning. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the penalty on the sidelines was deserved. You can't slam the guy like that. Correct. Run up the middle. Good pressure there by Coco. But it goes to a composure thing, right? I mean, you got you can't make these mistakes in these games. That this late. Yeah, yeah, you just can't do it. And you can't do it as a coaching staff either. Yeah. I don't know what the coaching staff was upset about. It was a clear penalty. I mean, yeah, I mean, this is not the WWE. And he's down to the one. It looked like he almost fumbled into the end zone again. Yeah. Speaking uh, of the WWE, they're going to have some issues. They don't get this Netflix, Netflix streaming thing fixed. Oh, I didn't hear about that. Oh, the Jake Paul, Mike Tyson fight last night. Boy, they screwed up worse on the stream than we did. Oh, Ball's yeah. Out. Ball's out. Ball's out. Still out. Roly poly. And Vero recovers. Let me tell you something. An oblong ball bounces funny ways. Yes, it does. See, and I, and I think the Netflix issue, Alan, was all, like like you said, it was all the individual people because I, when I looked at the local bars and the restaurants, they weren't having a problem. No, it, it was streamers. It was, yeah. Local, yeah, it was just all individuals. So, But, you this, know, local bars and restaurants ain't going to be the big money with uh, Raw. Yeah, no, no. Fourth and goal. 
this is for the game. I, well, unless Coco turns the ball over, but this is for the game, and you better take a time yeah. out, and they're going to. Coco's defense, other than the the the, the, the mistake of slamming the guy to the ground, because it wasn't pass interference, it was a personal foul. So they kind of wash each other out there. Correct. So, but so you throw those out. Coco's defense is playing there. These are two teams out here, Daryl, that are at. These two guys are playing their hearts out. These coaching staffs are. Playing. This is a hell of a football. Game. It, it, it it really is. It really is. It it could have been a one sided game, but. Like, like we've seen before, we've seen, seen in a 10 and under game, a team beat, uh, you know, the team earlier um, in the year 19 nothing, And you see somebody else come back and beat them by more than 20 points today. So, you know, it, it's, it's hard to beat a team twice in the same season. Yeah, this game is the same score as the Gators game. <laughs> I was looking at our numbers up there, yeah. and then I'm like. Yeah. I saw the comment there. And we've been watching the Gators game, too, but I haven't looked and at it. And th this is the only game the Gators are in all blue for some, I don't know, reason. Yeah, I, Quasha I, Felix. That's a good point there. All right, here we go, Daryl. Fourth down. Who's got it? Who's got the kahunas? Oh. Uh, that's offside, false start, everything. Uh, on sportsmanlike, we got it all here. <laughs> we're going to see what happens here. We got encroachment or we got false start. What are we calling? It's a half the distance penalty. Either way, you slice that pie. Double D. Yes, sir. 335. They back this up five yards. That might not be a hateful thing. Give you a little more room to operate. Okay, that's a false start. All right. So, but it takes it to the 10. I think it gives you, you know, as a quarterback, a little bit little bit more room. I, I don't mind that. If they're, if they're throwing the ball correct, yeah. So, here we go. Fourth down and the marbles. 335 here for Vero. Who wants it more? That's right. Three wide receivers to the left. Now, if you're Phillips, I get that you have a golden arm, but you cannot be throwing bullets from 10 yards out. And that's a false start on the quarterback. Oh, man. That's on the quarterback right there. And they are not going in the right direction. The quarterback took two steps back before the ball even moved. See that? Threes all across the... Oh, sorry, it's a 20 up there. <laughs> now, 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 you, you, you're, you're really putting yourself in jeopardy here. So it's fourth and goal at the 15 now. No safeties, man on man. Nobody in the middle. I'm telling you, them. You're, you're running a slant wheel route here. Yeah, I like to call, or I'm running in the middle of the soccer box. Throws. That's too much. Intercepted. And he's got to go down here. Yep. He threw it. And again, that's the thing intercepted by the Coco Tigers. Yep. Daryl, that was the very thing we said he just couldn't do right there. Yep. He could not let that thing go with all his might. He did. He overshot everybody. And the Coco Tigers have picked it off here. And if Coco can hold on to the ball and get a first down, three two, the 3-2-1 three, the three, the has controlled the Super Bowl today. Yeah, no doubt. So Vero's going to be down to their last opportunity to win one when they put four in today. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's, yeah, Vero is out of timeouts. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, that's right. Out of timeout. So Coco needs one first down here, and this football game and championship wow. is theirs. And they will. And, th and this is the one game, and I'll show you my picks, Alan. I actually picked Vero in this game. Did you? I did. This is the only game I picked Vero in. I was like, if Vero's going to win one, it'll be this one. Just because of how good I've seen him play all year. Yeah. This one, yeah, go ahead, Daryl. 
Oh, no, you're. Uh, all right, and now Coco's going to take a timeout with 324. But you can eat at youth football, NFL college, it is so hard to go undefeated all year. And I'm telling you, as a kid, you feel that pressure. We, we played, this was back in 2000. This is, you know, 24 years ago. We've only four teams made it. So we played Titusville for the county championship, beat them, where you were so banged up, played them again the next round, lost to them, but they actually went on to win the Super Bowl against Palm Bay, which at that time, you know, West Melbourne and Palm Bay, I hated, you know, we rooted, right. for, <laughs> rooted for Titusville. Right. But that's, um, it, it is hard to beat a team twice in one year. Yep. Especially back-to-back weeks. No doubt. I kind of like the new one. This is a lot heavier. I like the new one. A little bit less weight. A little bit less weight. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's first and 10 for Coco. Ball at the 20-yard line following the interception in the end zone. We just need a first down to win this football game. Big hole. Spins well, out. Yeah. Nice job, and Vero's defense is playing with all of their heart and soul here. Can't stop the clock, so. 307 and rolling. Yeah, they have got to get a first. No, 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 the player cannot go down. He's got to get up and get off the field somehow. Oh, man. Yep, we're going to take an official's timeout. So, yeah, he's going to take a knee here. He must have got spiked, that's what it looked like. Two fifty-five to play. That'll stop the clock. Now, once he comes off the field, the official will give the indication to roll it. Doesn't stay stopped forever, but it is that is a loss of two, second and twelve now for Coco. I don't think you throw the ball at all here. No, don't do a lineman. Don't yeah, do a lineman. Yeah. going to be Micah and he's going to be stopped short and he has slung down and it's going to bring up third down and 14 and I would take my good old time in the huddle and at the line 234 now you can snap it with about two minutes to go yeah and then run a play Vero Beach with no timeout if Coco plays their cards right would get the ball back with about 120. Yeah. Not a real two minute warning, but I just want to say it. So we'll see. And we're going to get. Uh, They're coming out that diamond. Well, it's going to be quads this time to the near side. Four wide receivers. Actually, it's going to be three. And one that's going to be a teeter that goes under. Back judge has his hand up under 10 seconds and the snap oh if he could have got free there that was a good I like the call so it's fourth down now so they're gonna have to punt this football if you're Coco you let this clock run all the way down if you have a timeout here, left, you here, take it and here. that's what coach is gonna tell coach Turner is telling him I need to know when the play clock gets down to one so I can take a timeout. That's when you take that timeout. All right. Here's my scenario. Do you do the old run it out of the back of the end zone, give them two points, kick it off from the 25, and let your defense go back out there? Ooh. That's, I, I, you know, Darryl, I, that's good, good call here. But I, I think that what they're going to – I definitely would not take a delay a game penalty here. And yeah, that, they, that's smart, yeah. Let that clock run all the way down. Now you come out, you kick the ball. No, I think with no timeouts left, man, I, that's tough, man. I think you're running out of the back of the end zone. Wait, wait, wait till Vero gets to you and run it out of the back of the end zone so you don't get tackled for a touchdown for Vero. Or you can kneel it and it's a touchback. Right. But I would give him the two points here. Kick it off, 
Because you got, um, oh, the coach's son's name. Jackson? Yes. Jackson can kick it off, and you can pin them back deep, and then you're going to want Vero to try to beat you with their long pass, and you've already picked them off twice. Yeah. Man, that's an interesting call right here, man. This is, that, that, you know what, that, that's smart football. We'll see, that's tough to execute, but smart football. My Ravens tried to do that in Super Bowl 47 and nearly blew it. 51.9 seconds here. Let's see what Coco does. Oh, no, 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 no. And luckily, that ball takes a Coco bounce out to the 26-yard line. That's an eight-yard punt. But, Daryl, you might have been better off running the ball into the back of the end zone here. You could have got it down to probably about 15 seconds. Scott, Larry, so, so, so Jay, Jesse Lindemann says, no, Daryl, you don't do that because what? then if you give him the two points and you kick it off and they score, they win right now. Well, I, I know that. Right. but th We're trying to kill the clock. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, and now they got the ball because you're kicking off. From you're your, kicking from the 25. Uh, it's right. going to. Right, you let Jackson three kick the ball. Or, you know, kick it from the tee because you got a choice. Correct. So, yeah, I see what you're saying. they got to go probably 50 yards in 38 seconds with no timeouts. So now they only have to go 25 yards. Uh, well, 38 seconds, and this kid can easily reach the end. Of, no, I get that, yeah. I totally, I see your point. And this is Phillips going to keep it himself. But I tell you, that's what he can't do. He has got to throw the football here because – now he's got to get up and spike it, and then now it's going to be third down. No, he's just going to throw the ball. Look and fires across the middle, drop. Oh, my. Wow. They got lucky. They had, they had him wide open. And for the first time in this game, Phillips actually threw behind him. Yes. If, if he throws in front of him, it's a touchdown. And if you're Vero, if they have a kicker, I would, I would go for two. I would go for the win. I, I, would, I would ask my team, if we score, yeah. do you want us to try to kick or you want to try to tie? Yeah, no, I, I hear you, man. A lot of people don't agree. I, you know what? I'm sorry, but I, I like my odds forcing them to go 50 yards uh, with 38 seconds and no timeouts than I do 20 yards. And we got a flag down. And I understand what they're saying. You yeah. Know, they score, they win. Okay, I get Correct. That. Well, you know what? Keep them. Yeah, I, I, yeah no. False start. Oh, I understand completely because yeah, no, no. You're, you're giving them two, five. Right. And, and yeah, six, six, it's 21. Right, yeah, but then you got, I mean, you I, got one of the best I, kickers in the ACYAA. I did pass that part in school. <laughs> I just couldn't read for crap. I hear you, bud. Like a blueprint I can read. Right. Here we go, third down, and this is Phillips looking. He's up. Gets outside, cuts back. He's got to get out of bounds. He does, eight seconds, and the Vero Beach Fighting Indians will live to fight one more play here. Mm. Two. One more play. This is too many plays. And this is going to do it right here. He didn't get a first down, so this has got to be fourth down, right? Yes. Wow, uh, he's looking at the stakes. It is, it's first oh, down. It's first down, okay. But I, I just don't think he's, they're going to have two plays there. No, they're not. 6.8 seconds. Eight, eight seconds. Eight seconds. They put eight sec I think he's got one play left here. If you're the Tigers, it's be a first down. I don't know. We'll see. One, maybe two. Two top. If, if, he, if he's scrambling, one. Yeah. If he throws and goes, one, two. We'll see here. Ball's on the ground. Nope, Look at fires, throws, incomplete. And and we'll get that's well, no, two point one seconds to play. This is the final play of the game. This Will the Coco Tigers pull the upset of the day here and knock off the undefeated Vero Beach fighting Indians? For two years. Two years? Yeah. 20 to 13 is our score. 
final play of the game. They won last Super Bowl in the 11 under, lost two years ago. Oh, no, man. Hurry up and run this play, man. Yeah, man. No, it ain't the battery, man. It's the stream. We're getting loaded up here. Here we go. Here Dro we go. Throws. That's it. Intercepted. The Coco Tigers win the championship. He's still going, though. And that'll do it. Stay. The Coco Tigers with the interception. And that's the game. Stays in the 3 2 1. The celebration. Congratulations. To the Rockledge Coco <laughs> Yeah, right. They, they're Netflixing us up right now. So, what we're going to do is we're going to log off. Congratulations to Coco 11U. Final play of the game. Final score, Coco 20, Viero beats 13. We'll be back with the 14U game in about 15.